In the 1870s, the first Detroit Police Mounted Unit was developed. However, it only lasted four years and was disbanded. The current unit of today was established in August of 1893. 1993 marks the 100th anniversary of the Detroit Police Mounted Unit. I'm Mike Sedmak. Join me as we examine the history of the Detroit Mounted Police. The Detroit Mounted Police Unit was established to control the drunks and highwaymen that irritated and robbed people due to a lack of police protection in isolated areas of the city. The small unit consisted of six officers who were assigned to one of three police precincts, the Central, Trumbull, and Gratiot stations. In 1894, the first line supervisor was called a roundsman. Roundsman Frank Wright was the first mounted supervisor. However, during those early years, the mounted officers were considered undisciplined and performed many of their duties unsupervised. 1897 marked a new direction for the mounted section under the direction of Captain Lemuel Guyman. Captain Guyman came in charge of, in 1897, and he was instrumental in doing many things with the Detroit Mounted Police. He established the famous Detroit Mounted Police drill team in 1904. He uh, established a training of the mounted officers, established a training program for the horses, and saw the unit grow up to 40-some people under his command, and, uh, which he uh, died in 1919. I'm standing in front of the Soldiers' Monument at Michigan and Woodward Avenues in downtown Detroit. On May 11, 1901, the mounted unit, barely seven years old, met one of its greatest challenges at this site, the riot at Campus Martius. In 1901, uh, the population was growing in the city of Detroit, and it was commonplace for large crowds to gather downtown at the Soldiers' Monument at Campus Martius. And uh, the police commissioner, who was appointed by the state government at that time and was not well received by local politicians uh, had decided that he was going to break up those crowds and uh, on a particular evening uh, had commandeered uh, approximately 200 police officers to the area where a large crowd of about a thousand people were gathering. Uh, a local politician by the name of Tom Bowden uh, believed that the citizens had a right to gather and uh, that was a fine place to gather. So uh, he planned to make a speech at that area opposing the movement of people from that location. Uh, subsequent to that, the crowd got larger and uh, the police were becoming unsuccessful. There was brick throwing, rock throwing, uh, people were becoming injured and the horses moved toward the East 4th Street barn with the crowd in suit. And they uh, took shelter in the barn. Uh, and before they got there, however, uh, one of the officers was injured, brick thrown to the head, I believe, and uh, a horse was taken down, and during the course of being pulled down, he crushed a citizen, and uh, the horses took shelter with their riders in the barn, and the crowd began to storm the barn, breaking windows and trying to rip off the doors, and the uh, police uh, decided then they would come back out into the public array and stormed into the crowd again, and uh, subsequently the crowd, uh, more and more people were injured and more officers were injured, but ultimately the riot was quelled and it was in fact called a riot at that time, the riot of 1901. Another incident occurred here in 1942 at the Sojourner Truth Housing Complex. There were several confrontations between blacks and whites over a dispute regarding blacks moving into the all-white housing project. The Fair Open Housing Act had not been at, at, at that particular time and place, it came some 20 years uh, later. The uh, mounted section, uh, the horses were utilized to go into the project area to uh, go well beyond the areas that vehicles were uh, able to go into. So as a result of uh, the accessibility of the horses being able to move in and out, uh, closed in areas, uh, they serve as a viable and important uh, necessity to uh, help uh, assist in uh, quelling the disturbance there. In the 1940s and 1950s, due to the labor movement, mounted officers were used to maintain order at strikes and demonstrations. One of the most bitter strikes that took place was the Square D strike in 1954 on Rivard Street. 
On September 8, 1954, the Monon section was called upon to pull a detail at the Square D strike. The Square D strike was probably the longest and most bitter strike in Detroit's history. The Monon officers were called upon because of their proven effectiveness in previous demonstrations during the uh, hunger strikes of the 30s and 40s. And uh, because of Detroit's history with the labor movement, uh, we've had, we had much exposure to the strikes. There was something about the horses uh, doing their job and moving in. And uh, I used to see people, as soon as the horses would, would start moving out into the, uh, into the crowd, the crowd would immediately start pulling back and disperse. I mean, it was, it's a, and I remember the time when they decided that what they wanted to do was to lose it, to disperse it, to disband it because of the cost. You know, they said, well, it's largely ceremonial. Well, those of us who had been at labor situations, especially strike situations where, where tempers ran high and passions were furiously high, uh, they weren't decorations there. Uh, you know, these horses were working police officers themselves. And I remember the Free Press taking a very solid stand editorially that, you know, that we cannot afford to lose this, uh, you know, this, this unit. The mounted section, like most police departments, was a predominantly male organization until a female role in police work began to change in the late 60s and early 70s. In Detroit, the first female mounted officer was Judy Dowling. When I was working in the community relations section of the department, uh, we were in the beginning stages of uh, affirmative action. And I think the department wanted to show the versatility of its female officers that were already on the job. And they thought that a high profile position uh, of a woman on a horse going down Woodward would certainly uh, provide that visibility. However, uh, I came into the mounted section with a great deal of background and experience, and they were very much aware of that. I was operating a 30-horse boarding stable. I owned five horses of my own, and I, one of them I had since I was 13 uh, years old, and I got him in Puerto Rico, and in fact had brought him back. And my uncle, previous to that, had raised Palomino. So the stable and horses and I were not strangers. I don't think a lot of people realize how dangerous it really is riding downtown. Uh, I know bus drivers got close enough to brush my stirrup. There were often times that I would have to pull my horse off to the side as I looked down and saw a parent pointing out to their young child as they were driving, oh, look at the, at the mounted person. Uh, jackhammers and flying paper, uh, that always kept you alert on your ride downtown. With more minorities being hired by the Detroit Police Department, the first black officers assigned to the mounted section were Victor Friley, Fred Sharp, and James March. March later became the first black supervisor assigned to the mounted section. In 1966, uh, uh, Director of Personnel Fred Wright uh, contacted me and asked me if I wanted to um, help integrate the Mounted uh, Bureau of the Detroit Police Department. Um, I was a little hesitant at the time because I, the only horses I had ever been on were those at Belle Isle. And um, so I uh, mentioned to Director Wright that I would try it. So when I rode downtown, I rode downtown in the company of another mounted officer uh, uh, by the name of uh, Rudolph Potyak. And, uh, uh, it was uh, amazing, it was kind of humorous to me because people were, uh, along the, the uh, street were waving and, and um, uh, one of the things that, that really caught my mind was somebody says, well, there goes the Lone Ranger in Tonto. And um, it was, um, that, was, that was a start of some of my uh, uh, wonderful experiences. Police officer Joan Wilson was the first black female at the mounted section. The second was police officer Marilyn Rudolph. As a matter of fact, when I was growing up, I took riding lessons at the state fair, and I owned my own horses until I went away to college. And I've always kept an interest in horseback riding and, and horses. I always thought the mounted section was a very elite unit. Um, I was impressed with the officers and their rapport with the community, and I thought that I would be an asset to the section, so I applied and I was accepted. Throughout its history, the mounted section has been instrumental in maintaining order at major sporting events. In the 1934 World Series, the mounted section mobilized and was ready in the event crowds became unruly. However, the Tigers lost the series and all was well. 
But in 1984, the Tigers won the series and the crowd went wild. Some revelers set police cars on fire and tried to turn over buses. Mounted officers were instrumental in bringing an end to the melee. Now, I remember that I was caught in that mob uh, coming back with one of my sons, and it was a frightening situation. And I do remember uh, there's also something about the flank of a big mare or stallion moving in gently, uh, but turning quietly and pushing people away. I mean, uh, this is something that's bigger than they are. A policeman is not bigger than they are. A mounted officer is, is bigger than they are. But not only in it, but we saw that happen. We saw them clear an area. We saw them clear the street. We saw them move people away from, the, from Michigan and Trumbull. Uh, and without batons and without any kind of cavalry charges, no, no theatrics. It was just uh, an outstanding uh, display, not only of police work, but of horsemanship. It was a great thing that the uh, mounted police of Detroit were there because uh, things were getting a little uh, scary. And when you come in with those horses and those excellent officers on their backs, people are going to move and they're going to respect that authority. And that's exactly what happened in Detroit. And I think it was a wonderful thing uh, that we had the mounted police there on that occasion. Today in the United States, there are more than 150 cities using mounted officers daily. In Michigan, Detroit has the oldest and largest mounted unit. The police department itself was only about 28 years old when the mounted division was formed, because it was formed in about 1865. And uh, it's been with us uh, for a hundred years now and so obviously that that tells a significant story of not only about the utility of a, a mounted division but about about its popularity uh, popularity with various police executives over time and political uh, uh, figures um, the public at large it's been a very uh, probably one of our most popular uh, patrol techniques uh, people relate very well to the horse and it kind of moderates between the uh, tougher image of, uh, of a police officer and the and uh, animal. The officer was taught everything from doing barn work to grooming the horse, to understanding how to ride the horse, how to, how to do police work on the horse, how to make arrests, how to control crowds, and then he's put out on the horse, on the street. And usually we put him on the, on the street with a, a more experienced horse to give the officer the confidence until he learns so it's safe. And then after about a year, we start bringing in newer horses for the officer to ride. This rotation has been going on for since the turn of the century, and it's worked very effectively for us. We train our own personnel. We train our own horses. Officers undergo 400 hours of extensive training. I'm going over this board, and we've gone through a couple of you. We may have you just walk sideways. Once they've walked over it a couple more times, we're giving them encouragement. But we don't have time to spend a lot of time with an individual, OK? So we'll start with Dwyer. You want to do not get too close. You want to give the horse enough room. Let him look at it. But don't look down at it. Look out towards that white thing up there. There you go. Good. Keep the legs on him. Keep the legs on him. Keep the legs on him. You're looking down. What are you looking down for? He goes to the right, Cal, so you got to be extra strong with the right leg, because that's the, le the way he's shying. Come on back again when you're ready. Hold up, let him go. And strong on the right leg, because that's the way he's going to go. Okay, Cal. Remember, strong right leg and don't look down. Not too strong. That's a little bit better. A little bit better, but he's still taking advantage of you. Go ahead. All right, somebody else go through. Don't force it. Somebody else go through over there. Come on, Charles, follow this one. This is a good one. Come on, Charles. All right, Charles. Think what you're going to do now. Think what you're going to do. Try and get up there if you can. Some way, somehow. Good. All you need is one. We're here uh, as a part of the program of a mounted division that's just been enacted 
for the Flint Police Department, uh, Mayor Woodrow Stanley and our Chief uh, Clydell Duncan plan to uh, had us come down and we were down here for eight weeks of training to learn how to uh, initiate our own mounted division in Flint. We're up here just to observe and see what we can gather as far as information for our future classes. We have a unit that's been in existence for four years and we found that it is necessary to have such a unit for search and seek, crowd control, uh, disasters, anything that does uh, happen in the area, we participate in it. I spent time with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police for a training program. Uh, they speak highly of Detroit. Um, the, the training we get here is unique because it builds up the stress on the horse and the rider and it gives you a real good idea what your horse is capable of as well as what you're capable of. For a full-time mounted unit, there's nine officers and one sergeant. We were trained by Detroit Police four years ago. Uh, we graduated in March of 89. And since we were so close to the annual crowd control event here, we were able to come back that May following and participate in this event. We didn't have our own horses ready at the time, so we used their horses. Since its inception, the mounted section has been the recipient of many awards and accolades. In May of 1993, the Detroit Historical Museum opened an exhibit which honored the mounted section. I think it's a terrific opportunity to show interdepartmental cooperation in terms of using the Detroit Historical Museum, which is the museum which depicts the city's history, to uh, focus on such a terrific organization. It's a hundred years old. It's obviously one of our prime historical treasures, the mounted section. And we've learned so much about what they've done over the past hundred years. It's just a terrific opportunity. I hope that we'll be able to do this with a lot more city departments and divisions. And I'm so glad we could start off with the Mountain Division because it's such a wonderful time to do it because it's their centennial, 100 years. The Michigan State Fair, which the Mounted Section has been a part of since 1909, dedicated the 1993 fair in recognition of the centennial celebration. Part of my remarks today when I talk about public safety is to take a moment to honor a group of men and women who've been dedicated to that cause for 100 years, the Detroit Mounted Police. And we've got Inspector Pat Muscat who's here today. And we've come on up here, Inspector. After the Mounted Section was organized in 1893, in 1904, they started their drill team. When the drill team started performing, uh, around the city of Detroit, it was decided to bring this drill team out here to the Michigan State Fair in 1909. That was the first year they performed. They have been a part of the Michigan State Fair since 1909, uh, most of the time in this location right here on 8 Mile in Woodward. Uh, they performed a musical ride which consists of 16 police officers, two sergeants, myself, the drill master. The drill is based upon the United States Cavalry drill. It lasts approximately 15 minutes and consists of the cross of death, the pistol charge, uh, the lance charge, and several complicated moves that demonstrates the equestrian skills of the riders. Part of our responsibility out here is patrol. After we perform our drill, we cool down our horses, break for lunch, and then we uh, patrol the grounds of the Michigan State Fair. Over the years, the mounted section has become one of the most popular attractions in the nationally renowned Michigan Thanksgiving Day Parade. It's always exciting riding in the Thanksgiving Day Parade. During the course of, of riding, um, the uh, crowds are so enthusiastic that they uh, make the riders even much more enthusiastic. Uh, one of my problems when I'm riding is I become so involved with waving at the children. Uh, they just get so excited when you look directly at them and wave at them that I have difficulty keeping my formation. And it's not unusual for the officers to holler uh, at me across the line. Zadarazny, back in line. Zadarazny, you're out of formation. But it's very exciting. Uh, I've ridden uh, for the last six years, and I enjoy it very, very much, and uh, anticipate that uh, if not a rider, I'll certainly be a participant in the parade in some form. A positive side effect for the mounted officer is his public relations, the good public relations that's generated by the, the officer on the horse. People come up, they want to talk to the officer, they want to engage in conversation, they get to speak to the police officer. The average citizen 
is reluctant to come up to a uniformed police officer engaged into just general conversation. Usually his conversation or her conversation is that they're lost and need directions to the recipient of a ticket or to reporting a crime. So it's good to have a uh, phase of the police department that the public is very at ease with coming up and speaking with them. Chiefs of police and sheriffs and different administrations start realizing that the public was being removed more and more from the police department. And this was a good way to put the public back in touch with the police department. At the same time, the horse afforded high visibility, maneuverability, excellent park patrol, excellent for crowd control, excellent for seeing over parking lots. I think the uh, 100 years that the mountain has been in existence has served the city well. And I really envision that the, a city will always need a mounted division. I think that uh, you will continually have crowd control situations. Uh, it is a certainly good public relations. Uh, I think it's a good visual. I think they are very effective in patrol and actually very inexpensive in patrol. It's, it's a unit of pride. And secondly, in a, in a very practical standpoint, in crowd control and situations of that kind, the mounted unit is always there, always. It's just, I, I can't conceive of the Detroit PD without them. The Bethune Street blacksmith shop, built in the 1930s, has remained virtually unchanged over the years. All blacksmithing and shoeing duties are carried out by civilian employees. My name is Doug C. I've been showing for Detroit Mountain now going on 15 years. Well, I've, I've been with horses all my life, and I guess I must like them because uh, I never worked on another job but just with horses. And uh, they're a great thing to be around. You know, I run into a lot of nice people with them, a lot, a lot of good customers. And how did you happen to get started in this profession? Hungry. Hungry? Yeah, the guy got home. I need the job, the work. And I went to school of hard knocks and uh, got started. Then I've been going ever since. Been shooting horses yeah, for, 30, yeah. for 35 years. See, if you notice, this is the inner wall, that's the quick wall. This is the uh, center wall right here. That's what they call the, on the red line, you see. And this is the outer wall. And you want your nail not past this center wall right here. You see, because if, if you pass that center wall, you're getting over in here, you're getting into it quick. Yeah, I just got done putting Borium on his horseshoe. We uh, put Borium on these shoes to keep the horses from slipping out on the pavement, give them a little bit more traction. I went off. We got a lot of shoes, though. They come pre-made. I start out with a regular shoe like this. Then I'll put it in the forge and draw these clips out. They're called side clips. Keep the shoe from slipping on the horse's foot. Then I end up putting the borium on. It keeps, gives them the traction. Uh, I've been here eight years now. and These horses are pretty nice to work on. They're just a challenge. The Detroit Police Mounted Unit patterned themselves after the U.S. Cavalry. Thus, the official saddle is the McClellan Military Saddle. The first saddle used was a Mexican or Western style saddle. But in 1897, mounted officers wanted to portray a more military image, and thus the switch to the McClellan Military Saddle. It should be noted that the McClellan Military Saddle was used during the American Civil War by both the Northern and Southern armies. And of course, the horses with their sleek, streamlined beauty seem to affect the sentimental side of people. People of all ages and all walks of life seem to have a natural love for the horses. Well, walking up and down the street there, people would uh, come up and want to pet your horse. And uh, they say that you must be a nice, good person because you take care of such good care of your horse. Well, I have a special feeling for horses, sure. Uh, having to do with my youngest daughter who was crazy about horses when she was quite small and finally I took her to them and got her one and I was the guy that had to go out there every weekend and sit both days while she played with her horse and I got tired of that so one day I got on a horse 
and it turned out I had a knack for it. These past 100 years, every major event that the police department has been involved in, practically every major event, the mounted section has been there. I took it upon myself to preserve the history as much as I could of the mounted section, to increase in any area I could, to improve in any area I could, to make the unit better, to make it more in tune with the 90s. And I took that as a personal challenge, and I also took it as with a lot of pride and, and tradition that was passed on to me. You take a poor kid from 18th Street and, and ends up being the inspector of the Mounted Police Unit, and he's nationally known for what he's done. And I'm, I'm very proud of it, but I think the number one thing that I wish I could be like is, is his dedication, his 80 hour weeks, his 100 hour weeks. I mean, he cares about nothing more than his mounted unit, his horses, and his men. I'm proud to have ridden with the mounted division. I wish them well on their 100th anniversary. I'd like to congratulate the Detroit Mounted Police for their 100th anniversary. That's hard to believe that they've been 100 years. This thing has been since 1893. They've been strolling the streets of Detroit, and I'd like to congratulate you. One very important thing from citizen John Kelly, I've been around a good portion of the first hundred years of the Detroit Mounted Division, and I want to be around for a good portion of the second one. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. That's a great outfit. Hi, this is Ernie Harwell, and I want to send my congratulations to the Detroit Mounted Police on 100 years of excellent service to the city and the people of the city. Congratulations, Detroit Police Mounted Section, on your 100th anniversary. Thank you for joining us.